Hello and welcome to a really gentle, nice yin stretching yoga class today. For props, I like to have a blanket, sometimes a couple blankets. And for yin specifically, having stuff is really helpful, just mostly to help you be lazy. So there's a time and a place to be lazy, and this is the right time. So once you have all your stuff gathered, then find yourself in your centering posture. So maybe that's child's pose, or maybe it's just cross-legged seated. And close the eyes. First few moments in your centering posture, allow yourself to exhale. Really let gravity affect you. So. If you're in child's pose, let the hips melt down towards the feet. Or if you're in a cross-legged seated position, feeling rooted through the sit bones. We won't spend too long on our centering posture, just long enough to find ourselves a really good intention for your practice, for a goal, some thought. Maybe you're looking for more inner peace or more flexibility. I'm just holding on to that thought for a few moments. slow deep breaths through the nose full and complete inhale full and complete exhale even feeling a little gentle stretch of the lungs at the top of each inhale and then squeezing out that last puff of air at the bottom going at your own pace Slowly blink the eyes open. So today we'll do a nice easy yin class of two minute holds. Okay, so our first posture is butterfly. Bring the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to fall out towards the sides. For your props, if one knee doesn't feel so super, you can place a block beneath it to support and only carry on if your modifications actually alleviate all pain, especially when you're dealing with the knee joints. So once you're feeling a-okay, on an inhale lengthen, on an exhale start to reach forward. Maybe it's a little bit, maybe it's a lot of it. Once you find your edge, not pushing past it, hold and even close the eyes. I'll get our timer started. You can't see it because I'm sneaky. So again, just finding your edge, but see if you can maintain that presence, that, that um, I'm not trying to sound too deep or philosophical, but keep your awareness on your mat. What happens is often we tend to go into a stretch and then think about our day or something we need to do later, but see if you can keep your focus on your mat, on your stretch. And when your edge, which is where you feel your stretch changes, allow your body to soak up that extra room. So maybe going a little bit deeper, only when it's available. So taking note of every millimeter that your body gives you, only taking when your body gives you that room. Another reason to keep your attention on your mat and more specifically within your own body is because the way to gain flexibility the fastest is to not tense against the stretch so be completely relaxed if you find you can't relax it means you're in the pose too far so come out a little bit 
So when you're finding your edge, find that point where it's totally okay to completely entirely relax. Just a few more moments. And slowly come on all the way up. Two minute holds are not very long. Send the feet out to the sides as far as they'll go for the next posture, which is a dragonfly, otherwise known as straddle. That was a hip. Sometimes you get a nice little pop. Hopefully it's nice. Usually those little cracks feel nice. Inhale to lengthen. On the exhale, same thing again, moving forward. We'll find our timer. And while you're finding your edge, just remember looking for that place where you can completely relax and feel a gentle stretch. And then just slowing down the breathing. It doesn't have to go as slow as you can possibly make your breathing, but lengthening, giving those muscles lots of oxygen. And the second reason to use the breath as well is on the exhale, see if you can melt just a little bit more. Closing the eyes. See if you can soften just a little bit more. Continuously monitoring your edge. Maybe there's a little bit more the body gives you. Maybe not. slowly start to come all the way up and this one I like to take a little extra time coming out of because it's a big one the next one we'll head into is dragons and this one will do low flying dragons so let's bring our right leg forward turn sideways here into a lunge you may wish to have a blanket or something beneath your back knee but the right foot goes forward, remember my trusty timer, right good foot goes forward, back knee lowers down, maybe onto something squishy, untucking the toes, both hands to the inside of your front foot, you might want to block or something to lower the elbows onto, and when you're ready, oh, I can't reach it unless you can see it, <laughs> lowering down, I like to keep my little tool secret, the secret timer, While you're here, one of the ways to make this more beneficial is to keep the spine fairly neutral. So if you're really hunched over to lower the elbows, that means you're not quite ready. Better to lengthen the spine, feeling like the sternum is moving forward and your arms are almost reaching forward. Now if that's too much, just coming back onto the hands and maybe lowering the elbows onto a block.
For this one, it's nice to think of lengthening the spine on every inhale and then softening on every exhale. We're trying to soften everything that doesn't need to be used. The arms need to work to hold you up, but everything else can completely relax. come out, lengthening through the spine, and you don't need to be graceful because it's yin. Let me just switch sides. I'll change my direction here. Left foot steps forward for our low flying dragon. Back knee lowers down to your mat or maybe a garden mat or something squishy, a blanket. And then on your inhale, lengthening, and the exhale, Lowering down maybe to your block or to the floor. Once again, maybe synchronizing the breathing a little bit on your inhales, lengthening through the spine. On the exhales, melting into those spaces that feel the stretch. So let them soften. Checking in, that your spine is long. And softening those areas that are stretching. to come out moving slowly slowly for the next one it's also it's dragons but it's winged dragon so right foot forward once again this one's kind of fun so right foot steps forward back knee lowers down once again just exactly like we did the first time but now the front foot tips out to the side and then let the knee splay out to the side. Ready? Here we go. You can also lower down. And if you're quite flexible, I find in order to not fall over, I use my right hand to keep myself upright. And then same thing again, slowing down the breathing. So if you're lowering onto your elbows, well, either way, arms are working. So allow them to work to hold you up, but really try to soften into the hips. And that's harder to do than it sounds. One part of the body is working and the other part is completely relaxed. And we're breathing and the spine is long. Multitasking.
Timer's almost out, so I'll, I'll start talking before we're quite ready to come out. Belly scoops in, lengthening through the spine, and the timer's up. Heading back slowly, slowly, slowly. And then come on up, lengthening the spine and switching sides. I like to between sides, take a moment to feel lopsided. Then you know how much work you're actually doing and it feels kind of cool. Other side. Left foot stepping forward, back knee lowering down to maybe your blanket or something squishy. And here we go. We tip the toes out to the side and then allow the knee to splay outward. Allowing the arms to be strong and the hips to be soft and relaxing. Check in that you're actually breathing, let alone full deep breathing. Just make sure you're breathing. <laughs> Spine is long. Arms are strong. We're almost done. Start to scoop the belly in and slowly, slowly, slowly reversing course. And come on all the way out. Give yourself a moment between exercises here, between stretches. Oh, the hips feel so open after that. But we're not done with the hips yet. Our next one is called square. And for this one, it's like fire log Agnistamasana in our regular half a class. And that's with the right leg on top. Eventually we're getting ankle over knee, knee over ankle. And then your lower legs are like fire logs. There's a tendency to bring them inward. We want them parallel. So we bring the feet out away from the body a little bit. If this is way too much, which it is for most people, um, because awkward way to put your legs. Some people have natural flexibility that way. I was not one of those people. You can lean back. This is a way nicer variation of that one. And then you can always bring it in. Once you're here, same, 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 same. Inhaling to lengthen. If you want to go further, feel free to lean forward. And if you're really flexible in this position, what you can do to make it a little bit more intense is first of all, be sure that you have ankle over knee and knee over ankle and that the feet are out away from the body. And then turn towards the top foot and reach your heart towards the foot. And slowing down the breathing. I like to use my blankie just for moral support, lowering my elbows on too. in addition to being something squishy. And same things again, really softening into those spaces. Be sure the knees feel 100% okay. 
often people will say, well, they're mostly okay. But in that case, we really need to focus on the external rotation of the femur. So the femur is the big bone of the thigh and we want it to move away from us. So if I've got my hand on my thigh, I'm tipping it outward toward the fingers away from the thumb. And I can even do that manually to really try to target the leg right in the hip socket. So we're not trying to twist from the knee at all. We want the whole twist to be moving from the hip. If it's still tweaking the knee a little bit, you can pop up onto a blanket or something beneath that knee. And if it's still not working, come all the way up or into that modified variation that we did at the beginning, leaning back onto the hands. already come on out for this one once you come out it's nice to just take a second oh. a little knee taps that's a pretty big one unless you're naturally but I know some people who are very unflexible inflexible let's get ourselves into the second side whatever variation you were doing we'll get our timer started so people who are just in general not very flexible, but they can do this no problem. And it's just to do with the way the legs are shaped, the actual bones are shaped. So kind of interesting. But uh, if you're not a flexible person and this is the one pose you've got, take it. <laughs> it's all good. We all have things that we are more flexible at, and less flexible at. And it, in the end, doesn't really matter as long as you're showing up and you're making progress. And by making progress, I mean showing up. So really it's just showing up. That's a really important thing. Once again, softening and melting, but do take the same care and attention for the second side with the knees. Be sure they feel 100% okay. Slowly, slowly start to come all the way up and out. Oh, so much more space it feels after that one. Take a second. Let's do a counter pose in between because it just feels nice. Reverse plank. You can do the yin variation, which is keeping the hips on the floor, or feel free to lift the hips all the way up if you prefer that variation. With the legs together, Lean way back onto the hands and then start to straighten through the elbows and lift the heart up to the sky just for a few deep breaths here. And then slowly, slowly start to come out. And then we'll head into shoelaces. There's a few different ways to enter this posture. The first one is to, actually I should mention, unless you're very flexible, you will need a block. And sitting up onto the block. 
So to start, you can bring the feet forward, especially if you're up on a block. Then let's bring the right leg over top of the left. And then once you've got that top knee right above the bottom knee, lean over towards that top foot there and then scooch this one underneath. If it won't go, it means you're not up on a high enough prop. And then if you're quite flexible, you can sort of scooch and then head back. If you're not as flexible, just hold. Wherever you get stuck, just hold. And for some of us, it might be like halfway there. You might be like, just right here. And then over the course of our two minute timer, which will start right away, you might find that you've got more mobility. The reason why it's better to be up on a block is because then you get both legs working. If you have a little bit less mobility in the hips, because this is a really big stretch too, if you do just the top leg, uh, you might get a stretch, but you're not getting double the stretch by having both of them pulled in because we could just have the bottom leg straight. But again, then you're missing out on that second leg stretch you may as well multitask. And then just closing the eyes. If you do have extra room, start to walk the hands forward just to increase the stretch a little bit. We want to find our edge without pushing past it. As always, slow, deep breathing. Really sinking into those hips. Slowly starting to come out already. Oof, da. And straightening the legs. Couple little knee taps before we head into that second side. This being a really big hip opening class, you may feel something a little extra in the hips. Let's get ourselves into that second side. The left leg on top, right leg scooches beneath, and we'll get our timer going. Often memories pop up. So you know how I always say, make sure you keep your attention on your mat, don't let your mind wander. Well, what happens if the pose is what's making your mind wander? And I know at first when I started yoga, I wasn't aware that that was a thing, but uh, I've told the story before, but one of my teachers says, every time he does a hip opener, he thinks back to like a flashback to grade six dodgeball. And he said, I have no idea. It wasn't like I loved the game or hated the game. Like it was just gym class and playing dodgeball. And that's just where that memory is stored for him. I know for me today, I have these little flashes and memories of just the last several weeks. Um, good things, bad things, just all sorts of things coming up, coming out. So it's a bit of a detoxification. And it's so fascinating how the physical body is actually connected to the mind, our, our brain. Like it's, it's our, we store memory in our brain and the spinal column and all throughout on a cellular level, your whole body. I think that we used to think uh, in science and medicine that the brain is separate and the body is, it's like the brain and then the rest of the body are two separate, complete different things. But we're learning more and more that, that your whole body is an entire system working together. And uh, yeah, yoga helps to detox both the body and the mind. So again, just don't be alarmed if you start feeling different things. Sometimes I know with some people, it doesn't even stretch that much, but they just can't go further because it's bringing up different memories. And that's okay too. Uh, I've had the question asked where, do I push it to the point of the physical barrier or to the mental one? And I say, whatever edge is first, you're going to your edge, whatever edge that is, the first edge, don't jump over any cliffs, whether they're physical or mental. Last few moments here. I'm 
and slowly, slowly start to come out. Maybe not right at this moment, but in like two and a half nanoseconds, it should feel amazing. We only have one left and it's a fun one. It's a full squat. So for this one, we need to stand up or you'll lose half of me for a second. <laughs> Stepping the feet fairly wide apart, like about mat width, not, not mat width this way, but you know, if you were facing this way. The toes I like to have off of the mat and then the heels on the mat. Toes tipped out to the sides a little bit and then tipping the knees out towards the sides, maybe bring the hands together and then allow the elbows to splay the knees apart. What we don't want is the knees to tip inward. We want to really keep those knees outward. And breathe. We're not holding this one for two minutes though. And if you're like, I'm nowhere near a Vega squat as you are, Carla, that's okay. Uh, just go to where you can. You could even uh, have your hands like on your thighs if you're up higher, just to stabilize. But it's more important to be in alignment with the knees, in line with the toes, than it is to be in a full variation of this. Just a couple more moments here. And again, you can use the elbows to press the knees out to the sides. And maybe your palms are together if you have nice long arms. And if you're T-Rex like me, that ain't gonna happen. So just kind of go like this and pretend that my palms are together. And come on out. When we come out, belly scoops in, lengthening through the spine, press into the pinky toes to be sure that those knees stay out to the sides. And come on up and all the way out and that's it for our hip class just fairly quick two minute holds we're ready for shavasana so feel free to put back on a sweater or socks whatever you need to feel cozy laying all the way back just a wee shavasana today if your back needs a little extra support feel free to keep the knees bent with the feet on the floor and allow the knees to tip in towards each other. Otherwise, extend the legs and the arms along your sides, palms facing up and close the eyes. Softening everything, everything, but especially through the neck and the shoulders and all the way down the arms, allowing the fingers to softly curl Softening through the face, softening around the eyes, and even the muscle between the eyes. Just letting it all go. seated position and when you arrive palms facing up on the knees inhale sitting up tall and exhale softly close the eyes taking those final moments to thank yourself for showing up to your practice today and taking care of you